Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to solve the problem count substrings that satisfy k constraint and we will try to break down this problem into these steps first we will understand the question clearly then we will dry run the test cases then we will think about the brute force solutions then we will try to optimize it then finally we will calculate the space and time complexity so for better understanding please watch the video till the end so here you are given a binary string s and an integer k right s and k a binary string satisfies a k constraint if either of the following conditions holds the number of zeros in the string is at most k either of the following conditions either this can be true or this can be true or operator or operator the number of ones in the string is at most k that means i can have at most k number of zeros or k number of ones in a given string right we need to return an integer denoting the number of substrings we need to return how many total number of substrings are possible that satisfies the k constraint right now if you see the example this is my example and k is equals to 1 now if you observe all the substrings he is telling that all the substrings except the following substrings does not satisfy the condition does not satisfy the condition why this is not satisfying the condition because you have two ones and two zeros two ones three ones two zeros here two zeros two ones now if you see another example like one zero one if you are having this i have two ones two na two number of ones and one zero one zero right now if you see here the number of ones in the substring is at most one right so this is satisfied so any of this can be satisfied now you, you can have this also one 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 zero and you have only one zero left one zero left and this is also satisfying my substring because zero is satisfying my so we are seeing the input and we are seeing this now how we will generate the substrings i think uh, as as you started programming i hope that you know how to generate the substrings so we will think about the brute force how to generate the substrings now we will start from i is equals to zero j is equals to one right i is equals to zero j is equals to one and k will be moving from i to j k will be moving from i to j so at every substring so it will be you will you are you are starting with zero right you are starting with zero and my you are if your j is one right if your j is also zero it is only zero now zero and and if your j is one right if your j is one it will be zero comma zero and zero comma one right if it's zero comma two then it gonna be zero comma zero zero comma one and zero comma two right these are all my substrings so i will go here and i will take two variables a is equal to zero b is equal to zero to get the counts to zeros count i am storing in a ones count i am storing in b and if it is zero i will increment a or else i will increment my b either it can be one or it can be zero if both are less than less than or equal to t if both are less than or equal to three then i will increment my answer and finally i will return my answer so if you see observe here my time complexity will be order of n cube right because we are going i is equal to zero j equals to one and i to j also we are iterating so n into n into n n cube now in a contest right uh, it's not necessary to write the brute force you can think about the brute force approach but coming to the interviews uh, if you see the constraints in the contest if you are seeing the constraints and if you think that your brute force will work you can definitely go with that and after the contest you can try to optimize it but in interviews it's definitely a point right if you are if you are having a brute force approach if you are getting the solution then try to explain the brute force first now interview will satisfy that you will think that you at least came up with a one solution then you can try to optimize it so in the contest is not necessarily to code the brute force you can think about the brute force and then you can optimize but in the interview right you should think and you should tell the interviewer that why this brute force will work so this that's how it will go now can you optimize it now if you observe here we are all now if you are getting i j 0 0 and you have going 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 2 0 0 0 1 and 0 2 right if you observe this 0 0 0 0 is repeating right and this 0 and 0 1 0 1 is also repeating again so if you are repeating it why why i want to calculate it again now if you see here if you see here if you are having this right if you are having this you are going from first you are going from 0 to 1 
then I will go to 0 to 2, 0 to 3, 0 to 4 and in the fly I will try to calculate number of zeros and number of ones. So this is how it works. A is equal to 0 and B equals to 0. In the fly like from 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 5 and so on, 0, n. Then it will be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, so on, 1, n. 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, so on, 2 power n. So in this way, in the fly, I will try to calculate number of zeros and number of ones. And if both are less than or equal to t, I will increment my answer and finally I will return it. So in this case, your time complexity will be n into n. And in the both scenarios, you did not use any extra space. So it will be, space will be order of 1, order of 1. But in the solution, it has given string s, so it can be order of n. If you are using the space, it will be order of 1. Explicit using, like if you are trying to using that space for your answer, then it will order of 1 order of n right i think you have understood it so if you learn something new from this video please do like and if you are new to the channel please consider to subscribe uh, i have created a whatsapp community you can join there for further updates i will see you in the next video till then bye bye